Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the Dell XPS 15. This is the Haswell generation of the XPS 15. It launched in late 2013, but it's still top of the line here in the first quarter of 2014. In terms of pricing, the XPS 15 starts out at $14.99.99 and goes all the way up to $22.99.99, which is what we're looking at here today, the top of the line. Uh, configuration. For $2,300 you're getting a 15.6 inch uh, form factor in terms of the display. It is a 16 by 9 display. One of the best in the business. Uh, build quality is fantastic on this machine. You can see uh, the keyboard fairly spacious despite the fact that many will complain that a lot of the keyboard space could have been extended or utilized in a different fashion because of the uh, armrest that you can see right here, the palm rest. But I have to tell you, it's really nice. does pick up fingerprints, but all of that aside, getting back to the actual specifications for the price point, because at $2,300, this machine clearly is aimed at being one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful machine in its form factor and really does offer specifications and a complete feature set you will not find from any other manufacturer. So you're getting that 15.6 inch display as I mentioned uh, extraordinarily high resolution I'm gonna bring it into frame right there just for a second uh, the res is officially uh, 3200 by 1800 and this is a PPS display so comparable to IPS for those of you trying to figure out what that is and to my eye, it is really one of the, the best displays, hands down, that I've seen on a laptop paired with some of the best hardware overall uh, in terms of build quality and just sheer performance. So you've got a great display, but then it's also touch capable, 10 points of multi-touch input on that display. Underneath the hood, we've got a Core i7 processor, as you may have noticed over here. It's the Intel 4702HQ. Uh, and that quad-core chip is very capable, and it's not a battery hog. That's another good thing about this machine that I'll be getting to a little bit later. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM, a 512 gig SSD. Uh, you have, uh, beyond that, an NVIDIA uh, dedicated graphics solution, the 750M, 2 gigs of RAM dedicated to that card. And then beyond that, you've got things like, uh, of course, general Wi-Fi standards, but you do have AC here, Miracast, uh, you've got NFC, uh, you have impeccable battery life. We're talking about seven to eight hours of real use. And by real, I mean uh, you're not going to be doing video rendering for that long, uh, but real world use. Uh, in terms of gaming, video rendering, those things are going to take a heavier toll on battery life. Of course, your screen brightness settings, all sorts of different power settings are really going to end up determining how much juice you can crank out of the XPS 15 uh, in this configuration. Uh, beyond that, you've got a bevy of ports, which I'm going to get to when I go around the body. Uh, the backlight on the keyboard is also very nice. This is something standard across all of the XPS models, so it's nothing new. And uh, just overall, this package at 4.4 pounds, 0.7 inches thick or thin, depending on how you look at it. Aluminum build here on the top, carbon fiber on the bottom. Uh, really, this is the best compromise money can buy, and many will compare it to the MacBook Pro 15, very similarly specced, uh, and in terms of weight, almost exactly the same, in terms of thickness, almost exactly the same. You know, the MacBook Pro, clearly a different operating system. Uh, the only thing I can really say the MacBook Pro has going in its favor is customer service when compared to Dell. Uh, beyond that, uh, some will argue build quality, but since I wouldn't want to run uh, you know, Max OS offering, and I'm not really interested in having to, uh, well, really, I see the benefits of this machine outweighing uh, build quality arguments for the MacBook Pro. So uh, all of that aside, the XPS 15 really is a game changer for the PC industry, in my opinion. Many are going to look at it as a MacBook Pro clone, and I really just see it as an evolution of the business. There's no question they borrow a lot of things, which I'll be pointing out. Uh, but you can see right here on the left side of the machine, that's where most of the action is. Starting at the back end there, we've got the power port, uh, and then we've got an HDMI out, micro display port, uh, and then two USB 3.0 ports, a headphone jack, and then finally the power button. And you can see four uh, little LED lights there, much like Mac employees. You hit that button, 
and it indicates where you're at with charging. Also, while charging, it'll uh, show you where battery life is at. Just a visual cue, something that frankly I don't need, but no one's going to actually say they don't want it because it's not a bad thing to have. Uh, moving around the body, uh, as I mentioned before, carbon fiber here on the back, and I have to say, even though it picks up fingerprints, which you'll notice immediately, uh, the cooling element that the carbon fiber brings to the machine is fantastic. Uh, this machine runs almost silently. Uh, only when I push it with gaming or video rendering, some photo editing, will it actually spin up and make some noise. And even then, Dell has done a fantastic job, at least uh, thus far in my experience with this machine, when it comes to keeping things cool. So that's something very impressive. Uh, and I think it has an edge over the MacBook Pro in that regard, simply because of the carbon fiber. And the cooling system is just very, very good. Not something that can be said for many machines in this class. And again, build quality is impeccable, something I really was not expecting. Uh, on the other side of the machine, if I can bring it into focus, right there we have it. We have uh, another two USB ports, as well as our multi-card reader. So really, that's pretty much it. Nothing else on this machine. As you go around, you saw the back hinge, uh, and just incredibly thin, again, redefining expectations for portable computing, because even though it still has the footprint of a 15.6 inch 16 by 9 display, by the way, the MacBook Pro does not have a, it has a 16 by 10 display, a little bit taller, um, but this is definitely better for just about everything in my opinion, uh, but it is a matter of personal preference. It's incredible to imagine what they've squeezed into a four and a half pound package. And as someone who has owned uh, several previous XPS 15 Gen laptops, this one takes the cake, not only in terms of build quality, but design, performance, it just has everything. There isn't really anything missing from this laptop. And when it comes to battery life, again, the compromise is on par with Apple, something that you used to not be able to say, but since they are working with the same parts these days, uh, it has become an even, or at least for the most part, equal playing field for all of those people that do want to directly compare this machine uh, with the MacBook Pro. So as I said, really nice keyboard, superior uh, display to anything else on the market for the most part. Uh, anything else that does have this uh, display does not have this sort of internals to match. And more and more laptops are coming out with uh, 2K, 3K-esque displays like this. Uh, but I have to say, right now, nothing else matches it. The other big advantage to the XPS machine that we're looking at here is that on any given day, Dell actually discounts this machine. So you could foreseeably get, I don't know, a 20 30% discount on it, something you will never get with Apple or any other uh, competitor's machine, at least that exists right now. And again, there's nothing to compare this to. I'll reiterate that over and over again. So now let's take a look at the XPS 15's backlit keyboard. As you may have noticed, the keyboard currently does not have the backlight on, but that's easily changed by hitting the F10 key. Uh, you can see that brings up the brightest setting for the backlight. You can hit it again to bring it down a level, and then if you hit it a third time, it will actually just turn it back off. So you've got two different levels and then off, essentially is what F10 will allow you to do. Uh, in terms of the actual brightness, uh, I feel that I'm more comfortable with the brighter setting. In terms of how even and clean the backlighting is, well, I have absolutely no complaints with performance uh, thus far. And this is something that rings true to my experience with XPS laptops of days past. So definitely, I believe that this is one of the better uh, offerings when it comes to backlighting. And for those of you curious as to whether or not it's a worthwhile feature on the XPS 15, I can assure you that if you require a backlit keyboard, you will be satisfied with the experience you get here. So now let's take a look at performance, since that's what the XPS 15 is really all about. We're looking at that gorgeous 3200 by 1800 resolution display, 15.6 inches, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, ideal for media consumption, and when it comes to overall performance, this laptop shines in just about every arena. So let's start off with some web browsing. I'll do it right here in uh, regular Internet Explorer in the traditional desktop uh, Windows 8.1 experience. You can also always switch over to the uh, Metro Tile uh, tablet 
enabled uh, end of the OS, but it's really a matter of personal preference. I like both. It really depends on what I'm doing. In terms of the application store, there is definitely a lot to be desired, but that will come with time. No question about that. Let's go ahead and start doing some browsing. Uh, some basic stuff here so you'll see overall performance exactly how quickly the machine works uh, you could see we loaded up pretty much instantaneously this is over uh, a AC connection by the way for those of you that are curious I do have a dual band uh, AC router and it does leverage it it being the laptop very very well this is one of the fastest uh, Wi-Fi experiences you will find on any laptop in the market uh, so if you're concerned about wireless performance, don't be, at least in my initial experience, uh, the Wi-Fi has been great. Uh, in terms of the trackpad and overall sensitivity, uh, you can see right here it works very well. I know you can't see the trackpad that I'm using, but it is very sensitive, very large. So for those of you that are, con are concerned about trackpad performance, maybe you're coming from an Apple product, uh, Dell has made sure to really perfect this. It's taken them a number of years, but then remember you also have a touch screen. And even though this is a 15.6 inch display, because you have all of this resolution, not only is it great for video, but it's also great for text. Here we are at 100% magnification and everything is still basically perfect, as sharp as it could be. So uh, I really do like this display. Great if you're doing anything uh, that really leverages it, whether we're wa watching you know, high-res video, you can jump on YouTube, throw on uh, 4K, uh, as well as, of course, uh, 2K content, since this can't really show 4K natively, uh, of course. But still, the display is a great thing to have. And when it comes to scaling, most of the scaling is fine. There are very few instances at this point uh, that I can really point to that are problems with this high resolution display. And the touch screen is just fantastic. It is so responsive. I mean, there are areas where, you know, with my Duo 13, that's a great shot, right? With my Duo 13, we would have lag, or I should say I would have lag occasionally when browsing, something you wouldn't expect. But that's the clear difference between having almost a desk clap, uh, excuse me, desktop class, I combined both words there, desktop class processor in a mobile form factor. Again, 4.4 pounds, 0.7 inches thick. Uh, you're looking at seven to eight hours of real world use and you know, no real compromise. You even have dedicated graphics. Granted, this isn't a gaming laptop. I'll be doing a gaming demo as well, uh, but it can hold its own when it comes to the user that's looking to do light gaming, I would say. Uh, and this isn't the enthusiast line. Remember, that's what Alienware is for. So the XPS 15 is a very powerful machine when taken in its highest configuration, but it's still not a gaming laptop at its core. Uh, but when it comes to the touchscreen, web browsing, the things you expect this laptop to do well, it blows everything else away. And that's why it is a stunner, both in terms of appearance as well as performance. And considering the price point is very flexible in many instances, it really makes it one of the most attractive laptops on the market. And you can see just how quickly everything loads. No problem. And this is what makes this machine unique. And that's not to say that there aren't other good laptops out there. There are. They just don't have everything that the XPS 15 has when you go with the configuration that I have here. And even though it's 2300 retail, there's no question that with Dell's coupons and you know sales that are running almost every week, you can always find it for less than retail. So do, do keep that uh, in mind. I do have a mouse connected here right now, which I can use as well. Uh, but you've got that flexibility of using the touch screen or the fantastic uh, touchpad out of the box. And those are options that most other machines, specifically the MacBook Pro, no touch screen. You don't have this resolution. Uh, you don't have a lot of the features that you have here. There's no NFC. Uh, you know, there's just a multitude of things that make this machine great. And it is one of the best laptops on the market if you are looking for a machine that is zero compromise on being as powerful as it can possibly be in every arena, every facet, uh, whether we're talking about Wi-Fi, screen capability, resolution, even color accuracy seems to be very, very good. Uh, no backlight bleed, no dead pixels. This is something that really is astounding when you're picking up 
a machine that sounds so good on paper it's almost too good to be true and that's something where I've been pleasantly surprised so far uh, with the XPS 15. In terms of a uh, little playback on media consumption let's go over to YouTube and I will bring up let's bring up my unboxing for this laptop why not I should have thrown in unboxing I will do that right now I could have put Haswell in there too. Let's see if I filter out. Here it is, watched. Of course, I've already taken a look at it, but not bad. We're on the first page of results, folks. Quick ad, speaker performance is fantastic, by the way. Can I not skip through this? Did I miss it? Looks like we couldn't skip through it. But here we go. And you can see we're in 1080p right now. Scaling is fine, by the way. I want to point that out. You can see the buffering going on right here. Let me crank the volume up all the way. The speakers are so loud. I'm going to lose hearing from this demo. Here today has a long. See how long buffering goes on. Time. So with that said, let me go ahead and crack this thing. Just going to continue skipping ahead to show you the buffering. Again, nowhere near my router. As you may have noticed here on the bottom, but not that much. Uh, and what we have is basically completely made out of aluminum. Uh, the bottom feels like it is a carbon fiber. It has two uh, USB ports. Uh, Um, you know, a lot of people have criticized it for basically... So I think that's a, a relatively solid example of at least flash performance, which no one would ever expect would be a problem on this machine. And I'm not showing it because there is a problem. You can see there isn't. Uh, the only time I see any slowdown is really dealing with 4K content. Uh, and that's just the nature of the beast right now, uh, dealing with 4K on YouTube specifically. Uh, but overall... Everything here is fantastic. I mean, I, I have nothing negative to say about this machine yet. Of course, that will change uh, through the course of my ownership, and I will always be updating uh, all of you on this machine. But right now, I think you can see when it comes to simple computing tasks, uh, forget about Office, obviously there aren't going to be any problems there. Uh, even video rendering, video uh, editing of any sort, if you want to do any sort of uh, photo editing, this machine is just going to chew it up because it's got all of the power that you could possibly need. And then battery life isn't really a compromise. Of course, it's going to depend on how you're using it. I've already said that you're looking at somewhere around seven to eight hours, uh, and that'll depend on brightness with this gorgeous high-res screen, uh, as well as whether or not you're using that dedicated video card. I've mentioned that the video card is not top tier, and it isn't. It's frankly old at this point. Uh, it's mid-tier, and it performs to match. So you have to have reasonable expectations. Will it be able to game? Absolutely. Will it be able to game at the top tier of the laptop uh, world or arena? No. There are enthusiast laptops to do that. So this is really about getting the best balance of performance that money can buy. And in this case, it's actually a value on any given day, depending on the coupons available for Dell. So again, the focus of this really of this video is the display, and then that's because the display, as I've mentioned over and over again, is fantastic. Uh, if I pull up 4K content, I don't want to violate any uh, copyrights here, but I'll look to see if there is anything that I can use. Uh, but it's really just a very very good display and even though we aren't getting native 4k as I've mentioned it still is just exceptional you're not going to find another display like this paired with such powerful hardware and that's what I will reiterate over and over again that's the advantage it has over any fruit product or any other PC maker right now on the market and surprisingly the build quality is uh, extraordinarily sturdy uh, very solid uh, the machine stays cool quiet these are things I really didn't expect uh, so uh, no 4k without breaking some sort of copyright infringement you saw the buffering was 
virtually nil. Uh, you've already seen how good browsing is. And of course, again, if you want to take this to the tablet mode, you can. It's just that that app store is really far from being complete. For many users, though, it is enough already at this point. It really depends on what you're seeking to get out of it. Uh, clearly, Android as well as iOS far richer in terms of their application options. But here you've got a real computer. So best of both worlds, a little bit, yes. And uh, the fact that we actually have battery life now that doesn't feel like uh, the you know the hour and a half to three hours if we were lucky a system like this used to command this is really a whole nother league of computing in my uh, opinion so a lot to like here it's all a matter of whether or not you've got the budget and really want everything that the XPS 15 has to offer a lot of people don't need all this horsepower they simply do not need the extra resolution they won't care about having a quad core processor or even dedicated graphics in many instances since Intel's own integrated graphics these days uh, it, it's quite capable it can play a lot of older titles uh, something that Intel used to basically force you to purchase with a third-party integrated solution uh, like from Nvidia or you know ATI AMD now so uh, a lot to like here and if I haven't reiterated enough uh, performance is very very good with the XPS 15 so hope that was extraordinarily clear one other thing I want to show quickly is the actual backlight on the keyboard I'm gonna pan down very quickly just so you can see that and there it is right there and you can see that it is very even uh, I really do like the backlight for those of you that are curious uh, for, it's pretty much the same as previous generations the keyboard has retained much of the same uh, look and feel as well. Uh, the F10 key allows you to turn the backlight on and off as well as go between two different brightness modes. You can see that last touch turned it off. This is the brightest setting that you've got. Hit it again, you go down a notch, very even and clean, uh, which I like. And that's something that, again, some people are very picky about backlighting on keyboards. That's why I wanted to share this. Uh, and that touchpad is huge. Uh, anyone who's coming from a MacBook is going to feel right at home. And I have mentioned this before, Dell is being very clear about uh, wanting to make everyone enjoy this laptop, uh, no matter what machine they're coming from, or OS for that matter. So you've got a touch-optimized Windows 8.1 uh, Windows 8 experience that really does deliver, in my opinion, the best computing experience on its own, combined with one of the best screens and hardware uh, configurations that money literally can buy and right now it is unmatched in the marketplace so a lot to like about this XPS 15 if you have any questions or comments please feel free to post them and of course as usual please feel free to subscribe later